Hey guys, Jared here, and uh, I mentioned I was going to make this video on Sunday probably, but I uh, got a little sick then, and I was waiting until I started sounding better, and then yesterday I was really busy, so I just got around to today to making this. So, this is just going to be my final impressions on the Division beta after finishing playing it. I put 16 hours into this beta, probably a bit overkill, yes, but especially for, for a beta considering it, it's limited, but I kind of felt I just wanted to get a really good feel for it, although... You know, since it's a beta, maybe that doesn't give you much of a feel for it because you're kind of capped out at certain places. So you can pretty much experience most everything in the beta and get a good feel for the game in about three to four hours. Also, the footage you are seeing is not the footage I wanted. It was pretty great before, though, because I had some Dark Zone game play and I had friends over at this time, so it was really cool. But I was extracting some items. I even killed some rogue agents in the process. It was a really great video. And I'm getting ready to extract my items. And I was like, this, this was one guy here. I better be very cautious of him. He looks like he could turn on me at any second. And then, just as you know, I, just as I said that, my friends were here. The the guy in the game, he like uses one of the emotes and just raises his hands up in the air and surrenders. It's like, well, apparently not. But it was a pretty pretty great moment. Anyways, but I'm using this uh, other. This is the main story mission of the game, the Mad clearing out Madison Field, or Madison Square Garden. It's called Madison Field Hospital. So I just, I never so showed that in my initial stream, so I thought I'd put that up now. So let's talk about the single player, or rather the main open world portion of the game. So the main open world of the portion of the game that is not the Dark Zone, there is no PvP interaction, but you can do four player co op, and that's where you will, like, free roam or do any of the main missions or whatnot, some of the side activities. The story seems like it could be compelling. It might be interesting just to see like what's going on with the city, how are you going to fix it and everything. And there's a little bit of character building, but I don't feel like that's going to be the strong suit of the game. The main strong suit of the game is going to be the gameplay. It's like, do you enjoy this gameplay loop? So let's talk about the research points. The research points are your way of upgrading your character. So you'll get research points in one of three tiers. You'll get medical research points, security, or technology, and you can get those type of research points by doing some of the side objectives, or random encounters as they call them, kind of like little mini side missions. They seem to be fairly repetitive. Some of them are like, oh, the medical ones are rescue this hostage. The security ones, oh, support these JTF officers and clear them out. Although there are a couple of them in the beta that are a little bit different, so there might be a little more variation in the full game than what I'm, I'm thinking, so that would be good. But it very it does resemble some of Watch Dogs activities in that they don't have a whole lot of substance uh, in a way. And also some of the other stuff like the city is very resembling of Watch Dogs. And some of the character models seem almost taken to straight out of Watch Dogs. But other than that, so you'll get these, these research points and they go for a certain category which you use to upgrade skills in that category. And you upgrade them at their base of operations. Now certain skills just require a certain upgrade to unlock them. You buy that upgrade, you'll have that skill unlocked, and you can switch them out at any given time during gameplay, which adds for you know great variation in your, your play style, like as you're playing. You don't have to like finish a mission, like even in the middle of combat, you can switch them out, which is really nice. So if somebody on your team doesn't have a skill equipped, and you're like, oh, I need the heal ability, we need a heal, so you can just be like, okay, I'll be the medic, you know, and you equip the, the heal ability, and you're good to go. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and you will get three skill slots in the full game. Um, in the bay, they only give you access to two, but you start out with one, you unlock a second one pretty early on, and then you'll get the third one later. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and you actually earn research points at a fairly decent rate, so you can get your skills pretty quick. I feel like you'll probably get all the skills fairly quickly, so yeah, it's not going to be, there's not going to be too much progression in that sense. Uh, now also the visuals, I'm not going to say too much about them. It was a bit of a downgrade. It's about on par with the, you know, at the same level as the Watch Dogs downgrade. Maybe a little less so, but it, there definitely is a graphics downgrade. But I don't, it's not, you know, really said for the game. I mean, the game looks pretty good still. But anyways, that's all I'm going to say about that. And then the collectibles in the game. The collectibles, they have like a little description when you pick them up. They give you some XP. But other than that, they really just serve as collectibles, so I would like to see more substance on those. Other than that, that's all I have to say about that section of the game. Now let's talk about the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is where you're going to be spending most of your time in the beta, because I spent 16 hours playing the beta, and the first few hours you can clear out pretty much everything else, so you're spending most of your time in the beta in the Dark Zone. And that's where you're getting, you know, more loot and everything. I'm not going to explain, not going to talk too much about how it works. You guys pretty much already know it. You know, contaminated items, you have to extract them so you can use them. That's the gist of it. And you have a limited capacity. So, really in the dark zone, you are going to need a partner. You can go it alone, but it is incredibly dangerous. 
and you will likely find yourself dying a lot of times. Now, it's true that even if you're not in a group, you know, they people can revive you unless they're a rogue agent, but you know, you don't don't count on it. So you should always go in there with a group member, otherwise you're gonna find yourself respawning a lot and having to backtrack to where you last died. Especially since the AI is like all elite enemies in the dark zone, and some of the named enemies are freaking insane. They will just charge you and they'll pulverize you. So you need, you really are gonna need a partner. Plus, it's more fun playing with friends, anyways. Now, one of the things I would really want to talk about, and this is where this originally became a concern of mine, but I I actually think it's it's not really a concern anymore. Um, well, I guess it is a concern in some aspects, but the the darks there was these dark zone chests early on in the beta. I would find them. You either had to have a dark zone key, which you could find from enemies dropping them, or you had to be a certain uh, level. I don't know if it was dark zone level or the actual player level. I think it was the player level. But you had to be an act a certain level to unlock the chest, or somebody in your party had to be that level. And these would basically just drop loot items, right? Well, I never got the chance to open them because at the time I found them, I never had a key, or I wasn't that you know, correct level, and it was hard to find people in the beta. And this is where another stupid thing comes in, is you have to be level 8, I mentioned this in my stream, you have to be level 8 to matchmake in in the dark zone, which doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, sure, in the real game, you'll get up to level 8 pretty quick, pretty quickly, but it's like, why would you restrict a player, you know, it's like, it's just this stupid, you know, unnecessary hoop that people have to jump through and, and reach, you know, before they can actually just team up with people in the dark zone. I mean, you can do it manually by going up to the player and inviting him to your squad, but you can't match make, which is really kind of silly. But it was these dark zone chests. They, all of a sudden, a day into the bay, they just disappeared. They're nowhere to be found anymore. I don't know if Ubisoft decided, or Massive, or whoever, decided to scrap them from the game, or if maybe they were just bugged, or, or what the case was. But originally I was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, being level, having to be level 8 to open this chest is kind of stupid. I can understand the keys more than that. But now, uh, after after them not being in the game, I'm like, they need to have these in the game. Because otherwise, what is your other source of acquiring loot? Well, you can either kill AI enemies, hope they drop something, then pick it up, and then extract it. Or you can kill other agents, whether rogue or not, and then take their stuff and do it. But where did they get their items? Well, they got their items either from the chests or from AI. But with no chests, then they're just left to get it from the AI. So without the chests, the only source of the loot is AI in the first place. So it can get really tedious. And at that point, you're limiting the variety in your game. And for an MMO, that is not good. So you're going to want to have you know, more places to get loot. So the chests are, in my opinion, actually a good idea, counter, uh, you know, contrary to what I was originally thinking. But they just disappeared so I don't know if they're scrapping them or what or if they just had to if it was just a beta thing whatever also the rogue system it's really cool uh, your whole squad goes rogue but you do have a timer keep in mind you do have a timer if you last out the timer you'll get the bounty on your head uh, you'll get the bounty that's placed on your head and you'll receive it if people kill you before then then they receive it and you get penalized uh, more you lose more XP because every time you die in the dark zone you lose XP and currency Although it's not very significant unless you're a rogue, then it's somewhat significant. But you will lose that stuff. So don't want to be going rogue all the time. You don't want to be dying all the time because then you could uh, you could start decreasing in level. But the rogue system is pretty nice. However, it does take a while to get used to because sometimes players that are about to go rogue, like have just shot a, f a friendly, a non-hostile target, sometimes their their health bar will all of a sudden turn red, but they won't have rogue status yet, so it's indicating that they could go rogue, and they're showing hostile behavior. But early on, it looks like they're going rogue, and you'll shoot them, and then you'll go rogue yourself. So I think they need, like, Ubisoft needs to clear something up there, make it very clear, like, who is rogue and who isn't, because just that r correlation, like, oh, red is enemy. And that isn't the case. So, let's wrap this up. What's, what are some of the good parts about this game? So, gameplay is smooth for one. The cover system is very, very good. The shooting feels pretty good. And the enemies, in the, some of the elite enemies, the named enemies can feel a bit bullet, bullet spongy. But in the bulk of the game, especially if they're not elite enemies, they actually feel pretty consistent with that uh, for most other MMO enemies. There's lots of player customization with your guns and your skills, so there's lots of variety to be had uh, to complement your play style. 
Also, I gotta say, it really all boils down to whether or not you like this gameplay loop. Because if you like the gameplay loop, you like this, then you're going to like the game. If you don't like doing this over and over again, other than playing through the main story and maybe spending several hours in the Dark Zone, you're not going to get much else out of the game. And you might be wishing that you didn't get it. But uh, Also, cosmetics. This is really cool. The cosmetic items in the game will actually carry over across save files and playthroughs. So, this is pretty cool. And maybe weapons, but... It was a little bit bugged out in the in the beta because I had an AK in one playthrough. I tried going another playthrough, and uh, it requires me to be level five. And it was like, oh, you can't use this item. You must be level five. And I was level six. So, oh, you can't use it level six. You have to be exactly level five to use it. No, I'm just kidding. But so it's a little bugged out there. Now some of the cons, though, there's a possible lack of some side mission content. But I feel like a lot of this game they're relying on the P the like cooperative play aspects of it and there's a lot of walking around from location to location there is fast travel system but it is sometimes kind of slow and you're limited on the places you can fast travel so there may be a bit too much empty space in which you will basically just be uh, closing doors of cars a lot probably so I'll probably make a funny video on that be like this is the division guys It'll just be me walking around closing doors and as I said before, the AI is actually pretty tough, especially in the Dark Zone where they're all elite enemies. But one of the downsides to it is that one of the things that makes them so good is the fact that they do have pinpoint accuracy, like in some, many cases, better than like what you have as a player. So they might need to tone down the AI accuracy a little bit before releasing the game. And there at times Starting in the Dark Zone extraction. was some bugs where you would just all of a sudden randomly die out of nowhere. Uh, but what I think that was, it was from invisibility, because I had one scenario where I actually was killing guys, and they seemed to not even know where I was at. I had this thing happen to me in Far Cry 3 once before, but anyways, it's basically invisibility, and you're killing them, and they have no clue where, where it's coming from, and they don't even see your muzzle flash or anything like that. So to wrap this up, it's this gameplay is pretty solid, but it relies on, the game relies on a lot of the, the team play aspects to keep you going, and this gameplay loop of killing enemies getting loot although the loot is somewhat less visually pleasing to the eye than in some other games like something like destiny so yeah but it all it really is going to come down to the actual physical gameplay itself i think um, and just just killing things with friends you know c the cover aspects so basically if you like the gameplay then that's basically what what the game has to offer you if you're not too big of a fan of the gameplay I would say you can probably just be safe with avoiding this game altogether. Uh, but if you do have friends that are considering getting it, you might want to consider picking it up. That's all I have to say about that, guys. Uh, check out my impressions video, The Division, when it comes out on May 8th. video won't come out May 8th. It may come out like three or four days after that, maybe two days. But anyways, until then, I uh, hope you guys stay tuned to the channel, and hope to see you in the next video.